Liz Truss resignation honours revealed as quasi Quartet and the Cabinet miss out. I'm going to read into this more from Sky News, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from Sky News with the headline that Liz Truss resignation to honours revealed as Quasi Quartain and the Cabinet miss out. Each Prime Minister can submit a list of people who they want to honour in various ways when they leave office. Various opponents of Miss Truss said she would forego the convention due to the bravery of her stint in power. Um, <coughs> she shouldn't have any honours list at all because of her short time. And the law needs to change on this significantly. I think it's a disgrace. Um, she crashed you. Well, you know, never mind the fact that she crashed the economy. <clears throat> that a lettuce lasted more than her as Prime Minister. Which I think... I think it's the most embarrassing thing. It's incredibly embarrassing to be told all the time that... How does it feel that a lettuce outlasted you as a Prime Minister? You know, that, that will stick to her for the rest of her life it's really embarrassing you know it really is and she does come across a bit a bit a bit a bit dumb <laughs> I, um, I'm sorry but she, that, that, that's just how she comes across when that whether she talks now um, for her to have an honours list it should not in any way be happening this should be shut down this should be stopped um, we're gonna have a look at uh, our We'll have a look at it in a moment, but I just think whoever is on that list, probably, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably not justified being on this list, I think. I think it's fair to say, guys. Yeah, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's probably not justified in any way, shape or form. Yeah. Okay, so, Kwasi Kwarteng, Teresa Coffey, and the rest of Liz Trust Cabinet have missed out on getting gongs or places in the House of Lords as part of her resignation honours list. There has been sizable speculation about who the UK's shortest serving Prime Minister would choose to elevate to the upper house or make a night or dame. But none of her top ministerial team, nor those who were credited with her tenure disastrous mini-budget are included on the list agreed with Downing Street. But she has confirmed honours of eight people. Okay, so she's eight people. It's not a crazy amount like... Um, like Boris Johnson, what did he have, like 20? Like, it was just a joke. Including political allies and former advisors and elevated free people to the House of Lords. These include Matthew Elliott, the polit political strategist and former chief executive of Vote Leave being added to the upper house, as well as the former Leave, Leave chair, John Molyneux, and List Trust former deputy chief of staff to number 10, Rich Potter. Tory MP Jackie Doyle, uh, Price has been made a dame, while fellow Conservative Alex Shelsbury, Shelsbrook has been made a knight. David Hill, the Conservative Association Chairman for Mistrust Northwest uh, Norfolk constituency, has been had an MBE back in 2009. He was rumoured to, to be heading up the, the so-called Turnip Taliban, which opposed Mr Trust being selected as the Commons candidate due to her having an affair with a married Tory MP, although he later supported her. Ugh. Uh, I don't, again, I just feel like this, it's just so ridiculous. It should not, this should not be happening in any way, shape or form. None of them should be. I think it's just a joke. Um, it's an insult to the British public that a Prime Minister was put in that we never voted for, that she made decisions that that we are going to be paying back for a long time, some of her, uh, her decision making. And an insane chancellor, and and the fact that this there's going to be an honours list, and that there are people on those honours lists who haven't contributed in any way, shape, or form to a better United Kingdom are going to be getting made these honours. It's it's a farce. It's a real farce, and it's it's not right in any way, shape, or form. Um, she should not be having this in any way. I, I we I don't think we should. There should be an honours list at all. No, I, I would go that far, if I'm honest. It might take a few days to find out how modest list has whittled down. The big surprise in the list trust resignations on this list may well be who's not in it. There are no names from the former Prime Minister's cabinet. No Kwasi Kwarteng, no Theresa Coffey, no Rajin Joanna. 
Other free market economics and inspiration is from list trust platform from government, also note there. All in all, allies of the former Prime Minister have made may have a point when they say this is this is a relatively modest, modest list focusing on long standing colleagues. That said, there have been reports that one person fell short of the vetting process and others may have declined the gongs. Well, I don't like I think, you know, quasi Quateng probably was gonna be. Maybe it's because he's he tried to blame he tried to blame her for what happened and then which was kind of like I mean they've had a close relationship, quasi Quateng and Liz Trust. And I think that strained a bit when they became Chancellor and Prime Minister. Um and instead of just played the blame game a little bit there. Um, Theresa Coffee, why on earth would you want Theresa Coffee in there? Um, considering the amount of sewage that, that she's, uh, the responsibility that she's had, uh, just, yeah. Um, and, uh, Rory, again, another one, why, why? As ever, it may take a few days for the full picture to emerge of how initial submissions were whittled down. There is a potential row brewing over the timing of the publication of this honours list, though. Number 10 has decided to release it at the same time as the New Year's gongs while MPs are out of Westminster and on their Christmas break. <coughs> Some may smell an attempt by the government to bury the announcement to try and avoid too much public association between Rishi Sunak and his predecessors' chaotic time in office. Yeah, that, that is true. Um, it's a, it is a good time to do it because everybody's in the festivities. People aren't really paying attention much to the news at the moment. Everyone's eyes are elsewhere. Yeah. That's exactly what this is. To try and deter and distract people from what's that. Try and, like, people are not, not going to be paying attention to news and politics. Uh, over the next few days, people will start getting back in. Some people, people will start getting back into it. But um, during the festivities, obviously, people are, people are distracted. And that's what the media do. They, they will be distracted as well. So that's kind of the reason as well. I do agree with that statement. Friends of Lyft's Trust are somewhat perplexed as to why it's taken until Christmas to put the names out, They were uh, given they were submitted in March. It's not the first time this year the honours of the Prime Minister from the past could have a political impact on the present. <clears throat> I'm delighted that these champions of the Conservative causes of freedom, limited government and proud sovereign Britons have been subduedly honoured, said Miss Trust. Labour Shadow Cabinet Office Minister Jonathan Ashworth said this list is proof positive of Rishi Sunak's weakness and a slap in the face to the working people who are paying the price for the Tories' crashing economy. Honours should be for those who are commit for those committed to public service, not rewards for Tory failure. Rather than apologise for crashing the economy or driving up mortgage rates, uh, costing families thousands, Rishi Sunak has nodded through these tarnished gongs because he is too weak to lead a Tory party that's completely out of touch with working people. Yeah, 100% agree. Liberal Democrats uh, Deputy Leader Daisy Cooper said. This shameless move to reward list trust uh, car crash cronies is matched but only by Sunak's weakness to in failing to block it. And number 10 sources says it's the long-standing convention for former prime ministers to issue honours lists. And it is also a convention that incumbent prime ministers does not block the potential peerage proposals of others. So who will be added to the House of Lords? Matthew Elliott. So who is Matthew Elliott? So Matthew Elliott is well known. Is a well known as a former chief executive of Vote Leave, a pro Brexit campaign group. He also founded the low think tank, the Taxpayer Alliance. Ah, one of them, yeah. Mm. According to his LinkedIn page, Mr. Elliott is currently a non executive director at the Lattice Group housing development developer, as well as being a senior political advisor to Shaw Kappa, a senior advisor at the communications consultancy MHP Group, and president of the Jobs Foundation. John Molyneux, who is John Molyneux, guys? He is a Conservative Party donor who's given thousands and thousands of pounds to the Tories since 2001, according to the Electoral Commission. Since 2019, he has given £53,000 to mistrust alone. He has been described as a businessman and venture capitalist, having worked as a chief executive at the PA Consultancy Group. Mr. Mulholland chaired the Vote Leave Finance Committee and was also appointed to the Board of Trustees in the Institute of Economic Affairs. Well, we know where his priorities lie just based on that information, don't we, guys? Mm. Ruth Porter. Who's Ruth Porter? <coughs> Ruth Porter was a key aide of mistrust. Ms. Porter served as Deputy Chief of Staff in Number 10 during the ill fate stretch in, number, in Downing Street. Ha she has since returned to the job uh, since she's been held as Managing Director of Strategic Advisory Group FGS Global. 
She had previously worked as advisor to Mr Trust when she was Environment Secretary and worked on her leadership campaign. So who has been making a dame all night? Well, Shirley uh, Cohen, Sherry Cohen, an author and former journalist, has been made a dame for her work in on maths education. She also donated five thousand pounds to Miss Trust since twenty nineteen, according to Sky News Westminster accounts. As well as her work in the media, Miss Cohen founded the Maths Anxiety Trust, which aims to help people who struggle with numbers due to anxiety over the subject. <coughs> she has written a free ebook, Money Stuff, which aims to teach girls. Uh, maths without a teacher. Well, that does sound like some positive stuff there, I will say. But um, giving five thousand pounds to mistrust, yeah, that's one way of getting 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 some recognition. <coughs> uh, Jackie Doyle Price uh, has been the MP for Fork Essex since two thousand ten. She was a member of the government under David Cameron and Theresa May. Served as a construction minister in the Trust administration. It was for this work that she was made a dame. Okay. Alex Shelbrook. Alex Shelbrook has been a Conservative MP for Elmford and Rodwell in West Yorkshire since 2010. Both he and Miss Doyle Price joined Parliament at the same time as Mrs Trust. He has been knighted for public and political service as Minister of State for Defence Procurement. The role he has held for less than two months under the Trust, Trust Administration, who has been made a Commissioner of the Order of the British Empire in the CBE. And other names here, Sophie Jarvis. Sophie Jarvis was advised to mistrust during her time as Trade Secretary and Foreign Secretary, also worked in Downing Street. Shaba Mendy. Shaba Mendy was an economic advisor to mistrust during her time as a Treasury Minister, as well as a trade and foreign roles in Downing Street. So who was made for the Order Officer of the Order of the British Empire, OBE? Oh, my God. Robert Butler. Robert Butler is the MP for Ainsbury in Buckinghamshire and worked as mistrust parliamentary private secretary in the Foreign Office. Suzanne Webb is the MP for Strasbourg in the West Midlands and worked as a parliamentary private secretary for mistrust in the Department of International Trade and in Downing Street. And who has been made a member of the Order of the British Empire, MBE, David Hills. David Hills is the Conservative Association Chairman for Mrs. Trust Southwark Newark constituency. So people who missed out is Kwasi Kwarteng. Um, he was Chancellor under List Trust, delivering the ill-fated mini-budget, which ultimately sunk the pair during Downing Street. Mr Quartain had to U-turn on the pair's uh, pledge to axe the top brand of income tax in the middle of the Conservative Party conference. He later found out he'd been sacked as Chancellor from a tweet from the Times. He has been a long-term ally of mistrust, having co-authored the Britannia Unchained pamphlet in 2012. Mark Littlewood. Mark Littlewood is the Director of General Institute of Economic Affairs, a free market think tank. Uh, he was proponent of Trustonomics and backed the former Prime Minister's mini-budget, which caused economic upheaval in pre Prematurely, the collapse of the mistrust administration. I don't like any of these guys. I don't know about you. <clears throat> Jason Stein was an advisor to Liz Trust during her time in the House of Commons. Also helped run her campaign to be the leader of the Conservative Party. Mr. Stein was suspended during his time working in, in Downing Street following reports he negatively briefed against the former cabinet minister. Raheem Joanna. Raheem Joanna was a vocal supporter of Liz Trust in the race to replace Boris Johnson. He served as her environment secretary and once she became prime minister. He had previously been a junior minister for the Department of International Trade and deputy chair of the Conservative Party. Theresa Coffey, Theresa Coffey is one of Liz Trust's closest political allies and even chaired the campaign she ran to be party leader. And once in power, Ms. Trust made Ms. Coffey her deputy prime minister as well as the secretary of state for health and social care. Yeah, it was well looked after there, wasn't it? Mark Fulbrook. Mark Fulbrook was list was list trust chief of staff during her time in Down Street. Mr. Fulbrook was at the centre of the controversy during his time in Number Ten. After it was revealed, he was being paid through a lobbying firm and not as a government employee. <clears throat> so those last ones were the ones, obviously, that that missed out. But um, pretty much all those names, guys. Not, I mean, apart from maybe one person that may have done some good stuff with uh, anxiety for maths, which I think is, you know. Uh, helping children with that I think that's the only good thing uh, but mind you though it's important to point out that little caveat that you know money was thrown at this trust directly there as well so I think that's an important caveat there but overall a very poor list um, even the ones who missed out uh, if had they gotten it I think it would have been disgraceful just as much you know these people these people don't deserve any of these uh, honours or rewards in whatsoever shape or form Especially when people are struggling to make ends meet, and they, you know, her her prime ministerial will always be remembered as the the one that crashed the economy. 
and thought that she don't and remember when she handed her resignation list <clears throat> when she handed in her notice i remember on the podium she remember i think she muttered to her husband as she went away after and now after her final speech as prime minister she's like i thought i did a good job and i'm just like did a good job you have absolutely no effing idea what you have done in this country just by your time as prime minister absolutely crazy lot um and why 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 did rishi sunak allow this like it is just absolutely outrageous it really really is <sighs> so what do you guys think what do you make of this trust resignation honors reveal maybe you guys know a little bit more about each of these individuals a lot more if you guys want to share some more information about some of these people please feel free to do so in the comment section down below is there a chance that maybe they could still be blocked somehow let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below of course hit the like button be greatly appreciated share this across social media and hit that bell notification icon so you'll be notified when i upload another video and if you want to financially support me guys you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p or joining me on patreon for exclusive content thanks so much for watching guys and i hope to catch you all very very soon